parents. Come on. We were like that. I was like that. 19 years old, I had two babies. Two and one years old. And I wasn't about my children. I loved them to death, don't get me wrong. But I was about Vince Diaz and my plans. I was doing what I wanted to do. I brought two kids into the world. And I wasn't taking care of them. The mom was. Yeah. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was out doing other things and with other people. Pursuing my will, pursuing my plans. Right, amen. You with me? Amen. They didn't ask for that. That's right. They didn't ask to be born. You with me? And yet I wanted to be a father at 16 years old, and I wanted this, and I wanted that, and it's so hard because sometimes the hardest part of serving God is you. That's right. What I want. Yeah. yeah. My desires and my cravings and my wantings and. And, and what I want, and God's like, you can't be about what you want no more. Right, man. Right, man. Son, learn to be a dad to your children. Yeah, learn to take care of your own kids. Right. Stop parting them off on everybody else. Yeah. Them are your babies. You brought them in. I'll right. give you the power to raise them yeah. right. Yeah. Come on now. See so many grandmas raising the children, the children's children, or children's children's children. Yeah. And they're already, they should be resting. They should be, you know, the, the children ministering to them. Right. Bringing them money and food and Taco Bell. Okay, right. I'm hungry. I want to go print you some, man. <laughs> Get a job, eh? Yeah, amen. Huh? Right. No, we want our plans. We want what we want. Yeah. Huh? I wanted what I wanted. I wanted to do. But when I met Jesus, it all changed. 19 year old man and 18 year old girl our lives changed and, and we, we submitted to God and God began that moment to change us into who he wanted us to be right. come on we were 20 by the time we were Naomi's age we were in a big giant church man with and it was a Caucasian church it was all white except for another family that was Mexican and we were amongst business owners and millionaires you with me and we were just young, little dark Mexicans with kids. <laughs> and we're sitting amongst business owners and millionaires talking about the things of God. Amen. Huh? Amen. Some of you ought to be talking about the things of God. That's right. And you're talking nonsense. That's right. You're talking sports. Yeah. You're talking jobs. You're talking houses and new cars. Right. You're talking yeah. nonsense. You're talking carnal things. Yeah. You should be talking the things of God with people that you, man, you're blowing their minds. Because right? they're looking at you and saying, where did you get all this knowledge yeah. from? Yeah. Where did you get this? How are you sitting with 60-year-old bank owners that are millionaires talking, are you with me? Yeah. Dealing with business owners and talk, tell my pastor, pastor, you know what I mean? This man right here needs, needs to not be on our financial board. It's not that he don't have money and he don't have business savvy. This man has no faith. Yeah. Uh, and without faith, it is impossible to please God or do anything for God. Amen. Pastor, get him off your financial board. Yeah. Pastor did. Got him off the financial board. You with me? I'm talking about my other pastor, not Pastor Ray. You with me? And, 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 and you with me? Got people out that you would have thought, man, this, you want them on your board because they're going to get offended and leave your church and take their ties with them. Yeah. Pastor, we need faith. We don't need that. Huh? Amen. Twenty something years old. Yeah. Huh? Speaking to churches and becoming ordained as a minister and all this stuff. You with me? And I'm working. You with me? Right. I didn't start working until about three or four years ago. So some of you get it out of your mind that you're working. Because not only did I work harder than you, but I worked to graveyards and came in and ministered under the anointing of God with my mind all jacked up because I had no sleep. And then I would come and I would get ready for the evening service. And as soon as that was done, go home. If I took a shower or whatever it was, got ready and went right back to work that evening. Yeah. So don't tell me and give me your little work excuse. Right, man. Come on. Amen. Don't tell me that you, you don't work, you don't do it. And then you wanted to come and pray. And this, no, no, no. You made an excuse for God. And you still got your plans in the way. Right. And God can't move in your life right. until you get out of the way. Right. And Amen. let his plans be fulfilled in your life. Come on. Right, man. You with Amen. me? 
He said, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Right, Not Pastor Vince Diaz. The Lord said this. Yeah. I want to prosper you. Amen. When I realized that, that God was on my side and God wanted to prosper yeah. me, and God would hook me up. See, some of you are still hooking yourselves up, and That's you're right. still broke as a joke. Right. Everybody knows it. Yeah. Ain't got, come on, two yeah. nipples are rubbed together. Yeah. You might think you do because you can swipe your card. But that's all fake and phony. That's right, amen. Huh? amen. Anybody that lives like that, shh, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. You ain't got nothing to show God. Yeah. Hmm? Right. You with me? Yeah. Come on. That's right, amen. You with me? Huh? Amen. 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 Doing God's will, doing what God wants you to do, putting his plans ahead of yours. God, what do you want me? What do you want me to do? God would always hook me up. Come on. Yeah. For, towards the, uh, for the last 10 years of my life, God hooked me up. Before that, it was hard, man. It was graveyards. It was, it was come on, it was it was doing things that I didn't want to do. It was, yeah. some of you go to work, and then I wish I didn't have to work so I could help the church. Uh -huh. oh, give me a break. You know how good as it is. Right. <laughs> and I said that for years. I said, you, you're over here saying this. I'm the pastor and still working. Yeah. Hmm? Come on. Yeah, yeah. And then and then God and then you see because God will watch your faithfulness. Right, and God rewards faithfulness. Right, God will bless you. He'll hook you. If you're doing it his way. Yeah. Don't don't get it all don't trip. Think God's gonna just hook you up because you're you know what I mean, you come to church once in a while. God hooks up faithfulness. And God began to work me into the school systems. By the time I was done, I was working four days a week. Yeah. Monday through yeah. Thursday had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Yeah. And spring break, Amen. Christmas break, Amen. Thanksgiving break, yeah. summer yeah. break, yeah. and getting paid yeah. for it. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. Amen. He hooked me up. Yeah. Huh? I told him, I don't want to work weekends, Lord. I don't want to work evenings, Lord. I told him, and, but I worked the evening. I worked the weekend with his will in mind. Huh? Yeah. And God began to hook me up because I said, God, I want your plan for my life. Right. God, you know I love you more than anything, and I want to serve you. I want to preach the gospel, Lord. I want to be on the praise and worship team, God. I want to be part of the outreach or the evangelism yeah. ministry, God. Yeah. I want to go into the jails. I want to do all these things. And you with me? There's a difference between just wanting to do it and doing it. That's right. You with me? That's right. Doing it is that you're actually out there. You're, you're making things. You with me? Right, Every man. spare time you have, you're doing the things of God. Huh? And I'm telling you, God hooked me up. Amen. God blessed me. I mean, I had... Psh, amen. Amen. Huh? For everything I ever did, my college, my work history, all this, God just hooked me up. Amen. Hmm? amen. Why? Because I put his plans first. That's right, man. He said, I know the plans I have for you, Vince Diaz. I want to prosper you, Ito. Huh? I don't want to harm you. I'm not here to bring harm on you. I want to bless you. Right. I want to give you hope and an expected end. Amen. I want to give Amen. you a future to look forward to. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. When me and my wife used to sit there and talk about our children and, and, and you know everything that we went through, I mean, I can't look back. And I wouldn't change a thing. So, man, God, you're so good. You blessed us so much. Every hard time and everything worked out for our good. Isn't that what uh, Romans 8, 28 yeah, says? Yeah, amen. Amen. Huh? amen. And we know that he, how does it say? And we know that all things work together for the good of those that love God, who are amen. called according to his purpose. Amen. amen. You with me? He works everything out for your good. He knows the plans you have when you're submitted amen. to his will. Amen. That's right. Hmm? I wanted to show you something, though, because we read that. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I want to back up just a little bit here. Let's see where I want to start from. Why don't you just read that from 1 to, to 10, Alex? Jeremiah wrote a letter from Jerusalem to the elders, priests, prophets, and the people who had been exiled to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. This was after King Jehoiakim, the queen mother, the court officials, 
and all craftsmen and artisans had been deported from Jerusalem. He sent the letter with the Elisaw, son of Shaphan, and Jamari, son of Hilkiah, when they went to Babylon as King Zedekiah's ambassadors to Nebuchadnezzar. This is what Jeremiah's letter said. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says of all, to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply, do not dwindle away, and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray, pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies and the God of Israel says. Do not let your prophets and fortune tellers who are with you in the land of Babylon trick you. Do not listen to their dreams, because they are telling you lies in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. You will be in Babylon for 70 years, but then I will come and do for you all the good things I have promised, and I will bring you home again. Amen. Read the next verse. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. He's talking to the Israelites that were captive in Babylon. Yeah. They were captive in Babylon because they were disobedient That's right. to God. That's right. You with me? That's right, man. Come on, some of us, man, I'm telling you, we can we we do yeah. malas and yeah. maranadas yeah. and we're lying, we're cheating, we're stealing, but we're Christians. That's right. Huh? That's and, right. We, and we think we're gonna get away with stuff like That's that. Right, man. And for how long? Seventy years. Yeah. God told Babylon, the king of Babylon, I don't know if it was Nebuchadnezzar, go into Jerusalem, go into Israel, take all the mighty men, the wise men, the strong men, take everybody that thinks they know it all. Yeah. Take them to captivity. Man. Put them in, put them over there as captives for Man. 70 years. Man. Are you with me? Man. He's speaking to slaves. He's speaking to captives because yeah. of their own disobedience to God. Right. Amen. Right. Come on now. Yeah. Listen, you can't live the way you want to live and do whatever you want to do and think you're still getting over on God. That's right. God will get you. That's right, man. And it's for your good, though. That's right. Just like mom and dad caught you stealing, took a, 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 a board and swatted your behind. Man. Oh, man, remember the feeling you got when you got caught. Yeah. And maybe it wasn't mom and dad, maybe it was the cops. Yep. Hmm? That's right. That's right. You with me? That's right. Or maybe something even worse than that. That's right, man. Huh? And you got busted, you got caught, you were sent to Babylon, you were sent to prison, you were sent to jail. Yeah. And, right. and what happened was when they were there, the, 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 see you got to be careful who's calling themselves a Christian and a pastor and a minister and an yeah. evangelist and a bishop and an elder yeah. and all these different things. Be yeah. careful just because they say that, well I go to such and such a church and, 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 and I'm a prophet. I got a word for you. Be careful who you're listening to in your jobs that call themselves a Christian. Because right. just because they're a Christian, they don't come to New Hope Ministries. Right. They don't hear what you hear. That's you right. don't know what goes on That's in right. those churches. Right, don't listen to their nonsense right, when they're saying this or they're saying, why do you have to go to church three times a right. week? And then prayer Monday and Friday night. And, and then women's on Wednesday. And, and you know what I mean? They're talking about tithing. That's right, right. man. We don't have to do that in our church. And some of you are like, that's why some of you are confused. You're listening to the wrong people. Right. He said, why are you listening to these preachers and these psychics and all this other stuff? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Who calls a psychic? Hmm? Who, who's listening to, a, to one of these? Who's calling them? Right. Stop it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the abomination of God. Try to man. Witchcraft, and yeah. they will curse your life. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. He said, you're listening to these people, and they're telling you, man, God's going to get us out of here any day now. We're, we're going to, you know I mean? We've, we've been punished, and we've been sentenced to 70 years, but don't believe it. God's good. Oh, he's good. That's why you're going to be there 70 years. Yeah. That's why you're going to do your full sentence. Yep. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's why you're going to have to pay that. I was going to tell him this story, man. I want to tell him this story. 
because when Matthew came back to the Lord from Arizona, started serving God, he, you know, we, we had a di discipleship training camp. He got a part of that. We were here. We slept in the church for three days. We went to the streets. We, man, it was a powerful time, and God moved in his life. And we went down to Fourth Street, started witnessing. He even started preaching to people, and they started listening. And God really changed Matt's life in that. Amen. And then it wasn't just a few weeks later that, 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 that something that Matt had got caught up in before he was a Christian caught up to him. Yep. And the judge sentenced him to, I don't know, he's, he put him in, he got caught for something, failure to appear or something, and went to jail. Supposed to be there for the weekend. I think he ended up spending 60 something days in jail. Hmm? And when I would go see him and when I would talk to him, he said, it's cool, Pastor, because I, I, I accepted it. And then guess what? In here, I've been preaching to pit people and reading my Bible. How long were you in there, bro? Like 60 something days? Yeah. And God began to move in his life. He could have become bitter and said, you know what? I was supposed to be here a weekend. I should have gone out. Everybody else was getting out. And I've been here for 60 something days. That's not fair, God. But he knew it was part of God's plan. Yeah. He knew I have to pay my dues. Yeah. I have to pay my debt. Yeah. I thought when I got saved, I was forgiven. <laughs> and I, the judge and there just dropped the case, judge, your honor, because I got saved the other day. The, the judge said, I don't care if you're saved or not, son. You're going to pay this thousands of restitution. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And I, I was confused because I thought I got saved. Yeah. Uh, right. And it was all supposed to just... Uh, See, because that's what we want. Yeah, yeah. We want the quick fix. Yeah. Come on. If you right. wouldn't have been a junkie if you didn't want a quick fix. That's right. Come on, man. Right. Huh? man. You want the quick high. Dude. Let's get the quarter pictures, man. Drink the whole thing. Get buzzed right away. Come on. We want that fast. Come on. Yeah. Give me yeah. a pill. Give right. me something. Right. Come on, man. Right. And I want that same thing in church. I want it right. done my way. I want it done right now. I want God, you do this. And I always, I used to say this to people. I said, you know what we treat God? We treat him not as God, but as reverse that dog. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, God, let's go now. And we treat God like a dog, like he's supposed to submit and surrender to us. When, when he isn't, he's God. Right, man. And we're supposed to submit. We're supposed to come now. Right, we're supposed man. to kiss his feet. That's we're right. supposed to go after him with all our heart. That's right. Not just. Hallelujah. Is he done yet? Gee, this guy preaches forever. Right. Hmm? Right, you know man. what? You're not saved. That's right, man. Right. If you're saved, you love the word of God. Right. Come man. on now. Man. I listen to the word all day long. Man. Come on now. Huh? Why? Right, because I love God. I'm not bored with God. Right. I'd rather listen to God than listen to anybody else in the world. I'd rather listen to the word, listen to a preacher, any, you with me? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, man. I want to know God's plan for my life. I want to know God's will. He told him, you're not going to have it one day less than 70 years. Not six, not 69 years and, and, and 11 months and, and two weeks. He said 70 years until the whole sentence is fulfilled. Man. Plant yourself there. That's right. Marry wives. Man. Plant gardens. He said, work hard and prosper and have grandchildren there. You'll be there a while. Yeah. But the preachers, the false prophets were saying different. God said, stop listening to everybody else. Listen to Jeremiah. Listen to the man of God I anointed to man. speak to your man. life. You're not going anywhere. That's right, man. He said, you might as well pray since some of you are captive to Pueblo. Yeah. Huh? You didn't even know you were captive here. God brought you here. Yeah. And he made you stay here yeah. to show you who's in charge. Amen. You're not in charge, baby. Right. You're not in charge. Right. You with me? Yeah. The other day we were driving, I seen this big old four-wheel drive truck, and I looked, and my wife says, look at that truck. And I looked, I seen it, but I didn't notice it was an Oakland Raider truck. Yeah. And my wife yells, go back to California. <laughs> Yeah, go back. This is the Denver territory. Come on, you don't come on the Crips territory when you're the Bloods. <laughs> Representing you get jacked up or vice versa. Yeah. Huh? This ain't California. This is Colorado. Huh? He said right there where you're at, man, put that Bronco jersey on. 
Because I'm in charge, you're not in charge no more. Come on now. God wants to just show you who's in charge. Dragon. You're not. Dragon. I'm not in charge. Dragon. I have to surrender to his Dragon. will. And I'm just joking about the Pope. I have nothing to do with that. You with me? But 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 the thing is, is God, his plans will be fulfilled whether you like it or not. Right, See, some of you are going through some stuff right now, and you, you don't understand it. It's hard for you, but God, don't you think that God's big enough to, to, to fix you right where you're at? Man. Right, amen. Hmm? Yeah. Man. Yeah. That the hard times that you're going through yeah. are meant to make you better and Man. not bitter. Man. Right, amen. Huh? That he's trying to work and produce something in your yeah. life. You with me? Yes. Come on, these yes. hard times are working in you. What is it? Patience? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Patience, long suffering, yeah. self control, and all yeah. this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. God's breaking you. Man. He's breaking you down. Man. Right there in that marriage, He's breaking you down. Right. Oh, I wish I never would have got married. God said, Oh, I'm breaking you, baby. Man. You don't think I'm big enough to take care of her, take care of Him? Man. Come on now. Man. God's yeah. bigger than the devil, He's bigger right. than the boogeyman. Man. Man. He's bigger than whoever it is. He's bigger than your enemy. The Bible says this. He said, when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. When I got saved, man, I started serving the Lord. Man, I had my enemies that wanted to kill me. Believe me, they wanted to kill me. And I had one of them come up to me, and, and, and you with me? And tell me, man, you know what? Hey, I'm sorry to hear about what happened to you. You with me? Yeah. I really threw a drag when I heard that you got shot and this and that. And, and I'm, I'm ready for battle. I'm ready, blind or not. You know, we're going to throw blows. Yeah. And this guy came up and God made my enemy. We had peace with me. Yeah. I remember when we went to the mall one day. I don't know if my wife or mom even remember. And I was there. And I, man, I, I'm telling you, I, I used to be able to see a little bit out of my corner of my eye. One of my eyes, I don't know. I remember seeing this guy that was going to kill me. And he had friends, man. He had about 20 friends with him, and we were at the mall. I was by myself. And I remember my wife and my mom, we went into a store, and I thought, and I seen them, and they stand right at the door, and I thought, oh, man, this is it, man. They're going to get me. And I remember, you know, I didn't say nothing to my wife and my mom, but when we went out the thing, I asked my wife, I said, is there guys here? Is there, is there people, guys standing here? She said, no, there's nobody. I don't know what happened. I don't know what God did, but 20 or plus men that were waiting for me outside the door of, the, of a store in the mall. You with me? Yeah. They were there to kill me. When, they, when I walked out, there was no one to be found. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. He said, when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. Yeah. Huh? You don't think he could fix them? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. You don't think he could turn a boss around? Yeah. Huh? Because yeah. you pray, and you seek the Lord, and you right. submit to the Lord's will. Yeah. He said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I'll repay evil for evil. You don't even have to trip. Man. He said, just worship me. Man. Just get involved. Submit to my will. Submit to my plan. Huh? I'll take care of you. Why? Because he's God. Man. We're not God. You've got to understand that you're not God. Hmm? And I know I say that to the men because us men are macho and we think we're all that in a bag of chips and we'll beat everybody up and all this. But, but, but man, some of you ladies are heavy duty, man. man. Some of you are more stubborn than a donkey. Yeah. You know them donkeys you sit down and they put their legs in, they ain't moving, man. Some of you are worse than that. Even Balaam's donkey at least submitted to the Lord and let him use him to speak through it. Man. Huh? Man. Some of you got to break that rebellious spirit, that stubborn spirit. He said rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is an idolatry. Stop it. Man. Submit to God's will. Let him do what he wants to do in your Man. life. Man. He says, I want to bless you. I want to prosper you. I don't want to spank you. How many of you ever had to discipline your children? You're like, man, it, it you know. Yeah. Yeah. I almost said it sucks. <laughs> I'm serious, yeah. though. Yeah. Just such a heartache. And you're yeah. having to go over that with that kid again. And, man, it seems like all you're doing is spanking them or disciplining them or they're, you're arguing with them again. And, yeah. And it sucks. Yeah, right. And your your life is in, in an uproar because of it. Yeah. And you get man, you get tired of that. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. God gets tired of arguing with us too. Yeah, yeah. He gets tired of spanking and having to discipline again. 
There they go again, yeah. have to discipline them again. He yeah. said in Isaiah chapter 1, he said, man, I'm sick of disciplining you. He said, son, from head to toe, you're bruised already from me spanking and disciplining you. And I'm tired of this. Right. Let's reason together. Yeah. If your sins are scarlet, I'll make them white as snow as they red like crimson. I'll make them whiter than wool. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen. Hmm? Amen. God Amen. wants us to surrender and submit to his will. You with me? Amen. And watch what happens when he says that. Uh, verse, verse 11. Let's see where I'm at here. Okay. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a, and a future. Then watch what it says. Look, it says then. And then means after you've done this, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on, where's your college people at? <laughs> Doesn't it mean then? That means that we've come from somewhere yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going somewhere else here. Yeah. He said then, after you've achieved this, after you've done this, he said you will call on me. And come and pray to me. See, he said, if you get it right, then you want to go to prayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Lord. And I will listen to you. Have you ever prayed and know God ain't even listening to you? Yeah. Hmm? When you know you're out of the step, out of the will of God. He said, he said, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So obviously it means they've been seeking him half-heartedly. Yeah. And they ain't getting no answers. Huh? He said, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Amen? Amen. I will gather you from all the nations and, and places where I have brought, uh, where I have banished you. Hmm? Amen. Come on. Amen. Declares the Lord. And will bring you back to the to, to the place from which I carried you into exile. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Amen. God said, I'll bring you back. Right. We're singing a song, I'm taking it back. Yeah. I'm taking it back. Everything. Well, let's see. Right. Amen. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Amen. Let's see. If you're serving God, you're going to bring it back. Amen. If you're Amen. serving God, you're going, to, you're going to reap it. You're going to Amen. find it. You're right. going to right. search for right. it. You're going to find it with all your heart. Yeah. You with me? If you're seeking the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, I'll bring you back from exile. I'll bring you back from that Babylon, from where I sent you. I put, I punished you. Time out. Uh -huh. Huh? Yeah. There's a good place to, say, to, to use for time out. Yeah. Look, son, this is when you're going to go to time out. God banished the children of Israel 70 years. For 70 minutes, you're going to stay in your room. And not one minute less than. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man. Ten minutes into it, mom, I'm sorry. Okay, come on out. And they're still the same as they were. Come on now. Yeah. Hmm? That's yeah. why God's not going to let you get out of what you're into. Man. Huh? He's going to let you go through. And I'm telling you by experience, we've been through some stuff in our life. Years. You with me? Amen. God has given us visions. God has given us, uh, 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 you know what I mean, expectations of things, of people, of a lot of people serving Jesus. And 30-something years later, we're or two out from our ministry, 20-something years later, we're still looking for, well, where is it at, Lord? Huh? Right. God don't lie. He'll do what he said he's going to do. Right. It's us that got to conform, us that got to be patient, us that got to surrender and submit to God's timing. Right, amen. God's timing in the matter. Amen. He ain't going to do it. If you don't, I want it now. I want it now. Oh, then you, if you do that to me, you're going to stay way longer. Yeah. Huh? I can imagine the way the Lord is. Okay. 70 years just turned into 140. <laughs> You want us to want to talk some more? Huh? No, Lord, I'm sorry. Can we go back to 70? Huh? Submitting to God's will is what we must do. 
Amen. Not what we should, you know, I mean, if you get a chance, opportunity, it's Amen. something you have to do. Amen. If you want God's blessing on your life, if you want God to do what he said he's going to do, all these promises and precious promises, they don't happen to just a bunch of rebellious people. Yeah. Why would you give your kids a bunch of stuff when they're acting like brats and right. throwing a fit and, and right. cussing and yelling at you and talking back? Right. Uh-uh. Right. Yesterday we were walking out, of, we were walking into the mall and this lady and her children were walking out of Sears and the lady had her daughter by her collar at first and then the little girl, that little girl, and this was a Spanish mom. She was a younger mom, but she was a Mexican, you know, and the little girl looked and she said, she told her, I don't know exactly how she said it, but she said, you're, you're, you're a liar. She said, tu eres un mentirosa. Mexican people are not like yous. Right. Yous. <laughs> they're, they're strict over there. You with me? Yeah. They still pull ears and spank butts, and they still do that. She grabbed that little girl by the ear, and I said, ooh, Lord Jesus, you're in trouble. She, and the mom said, don't you ever call me a liar. I told her, don't you tell me I'm a menti hostage. She had her by her, oh, I love it, oh, I to pull that ear, yank it off her. Teacher never ever took to your mom and tell her you're a liar. That's like us telling God he's a liar. Yeah. That's like us telling God this book's a bunch of lies and yeah. throwing the trash. Yeah. Uh -uh, that book's real. Yeah. That book's a lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got to conform to that book. Yeah. We've got to learn what this book has to say. He said, you'll seek me and you'll find me when. See, if you're not searching for God with all your heart right now, you're, that's why you don't see him. Yeah, yeah. That's why you don't find him. That's right. why he don't work in your right. life. He might bless you just because he's good, but he blesses the heathen too. Yeah. Just yeah. because he's good. Yeah, you want to be equal with them? No, no, no. Hmm? Amen. He right. said, I make the sun shine on them and the rain fall on them too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, don't, I want the blessings. I want the, you with me? Amen. I was raised with my grandmother. My grandmother had several other children, but she had several other grandchildren, but I was raised with grandma. Man, man. I got the chocolate cake yeah, man. Yeah. with great jelly in between. And the tortillas. Huh? And the benefits, the, 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 not only to be with her, you with me? Yeah. But, the, but on Christmas, we got way more than everybody else did. They, they were lucky to get anything. We, we, we lived with grandma. We were blessed. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I don't know about you. You want to be like everybody else and get you know, a toy from the dollar store and this and that. I want to live with them. Yeah. I want to live with the Lord. I want to yeah. be by his. I yeah. want to be blessed. I want his anointing all over me. Yeah. Huh? I want him to use me. I don't want, I don't want to sit, watch everybody else and all these people and not just preachers but just people god's using them and doing great things and they're raising they're raising up in ministry and you wouldn't be doing all these great things and you're just watching them and then years later you're still just watching them you with me Amen. because we, we're, we're searching for him half-heartedly doing what we want to do i want everything god has for me i want that for your life too Amen. you with me i want you to prosper i want you to be blessed Amen. but you have to do it his way you with me? Yeah. Jesus knew that in the garden, right? Yeah. He came and he said, not my will. Lord, is there any other way? I mean, is there a plan B? <laughs> you all know what plan B is, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But it's in case you get in trouble. Yeah. You just swallow a pill and it takes yeah. away the problem. Plan B. There is no plan B in God. That's right. That's right. There is. You deal with the problem. Man. You raise the problem. That's right. You live for it. You work hard for it. Come on. You can't hide it. Hide it away and put it away and send it away and kill it away. Mm -hmm. You got to do with God because God didn't kill you. God didn't kill you. He didn't throw you away. He did that in the flood. He killed everybody in the flood. And he, he with me. And he was sorry that he did that. He said, I'll never again do that again. I'll never kill everybody and flood the earth and do all this again. I'll never do that. He made a covenant of a, a rainbow. You with me? God wants us to serve him. And he gives us the spirit and the power to do so. 
and to live for him, not just to, I mean, there's no, what's the difference between us and somebody that just goes to church on Sunday? Amen. What's the difference? Amen. You with me? Amen. There's got to be a difference because yeah. we're serving a real God and a powerful God, supernatural God and healing God and delivering God and there, that there's no difference. Right. There's got to be a difference. Yeah. The, are you with me? Because Christ lives in you. Right. And he'll Amen. give you the power to live for him. Yeah. He'll give you the power That's to right. live for him. Right. Amen. 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 When you're seeking his will and his plans, stop living for yourself. Right. And start living for God. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? I pray this ain't hard for you. I pray it's, it's easy, right? Man. I mean, it's just as easy as yeah. surrender. Yeah. I pray you're not sitting there like, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make it as simple and as easy as I can. Right. You with me? So that we, we'll know, man, it's got to be first. Amen. You can't be second or third or fourth in your life. You can't. And no matter what you're going through, he knows exactly where you're at right now. And I'm not talking about you're in church. I'm talking about in your personal life. Right. He knows exactly right. where you're at. And he loves you even yet. Amen. Yeah, huh? He loves you. Amen. And, he's, and he's pleading with you. Listen to Amen. the preacher. Listen to the pastor. You, we make things hard on ourselves. That's right. That's right. We, come on, we get ourselves in a big old pickle and a big old mess. And, and, and then we're, God, why? Huh? Yep. I seen this guy on the cops one time, and he was in, he was in, they, they arrested him, stuck him in a cell, I think maybe it was the one of jail, the jail one? Yeah. And he's in the cell, and he's pounding on the wall, God, and he had just beat his wife up, and he was arrested for domestic violence, but he's pounding on the wall saying, God, why did you put me in here? Uh, you did this to me. <laughs> And I'm thinking, stupid, through the TV, you did it to yourself. God didn't do this to you, and he didn't put you in jail. Yeah. You did it, Tonto. That's right. That's right. And we're blaming him for everything. That's right, man. Huh? Come on now. Yeah. you got to realize, man, I have to stop beating my wife. Yeah. And I won't go to jail. Yeah. And I might have an all right marriage. That's right, man. Huh? Man. Yeah. Amen. God, God knows exactly where you're at right now, and He's big enough to get you out of the mess you're in. That's right. You're in a mess right now, He's big enough to take you out of that mess. That's it's right. just Amen. finding Him and surrendering to His will. Amen. Right. Saying, God, I'm here and I, want, I, I need your help. That's right. I need you, God. Amen. I need your help today to Amen. serve you, to live for Amen. you, to, you with me, to become the person that God wants you to be. That's right. You with me? Amen. But I, I surrender to your plans. Man, man. You know, when the cop puts a gun out and says, hey, hold it, stick him up or whatever, and you, uh, I surrender. You with me? Amen. That's what God wants you to do, just surrender. That's right. Man. Surrender to whatever it is today. Man. You with me? Surrender to God and get rid of the other stuff. Yeah. And watch right. and see what God does. Yes. God's not a liar. Man. Right. He's not a liar. He'll do what he said he's going to do. Right. Amen.